Today, what I find is that the people of India are fighting this election. And therefore, this fight is between the Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi and the people. Bharati Janata Party and the people of India. NDA and the people of India. Venu against the people of India. Whoever may be the leader, may be the tallest, even a Bahubali, even Sri Narendra Modi, would look like a lunatic. Even the configuration that we see today, it is unlikely to happen. And okay. given, given that it's very visible that the people are fighting, coming out and yes. fighting this government. You know, this regime and the leadership of Sri Narendra are facing very, very strong enemies. And, and, and therefore, the, yeah. therefore your point, where at least now let us let us get out of it respectfully and protect that core constituency around us, lest even that might detect. Hello and welcome to this uh, special discussion on the wire. And today we will talk about uh, the the ongoing Lok Sabha elections and the, the stage that we have reached. Uh, six phases are over, and there's only one last phase left, uh, uh, which is uh, in a couple of days, or the first and the last phase uh, will be over. The bulk of the elections are over, and and we already have a few learnings uh, from the current Lok Sabha election, which, which are only there is general consensus. One is that this election is being fought by the people of India. In, in several states, there's very strong anti-incumbency and the people of India are essentially fighting this election for the opposition against the BJP. Learning number two, which again around which there is consensus, that Prime Minister Narendra Modi, his, his personal branding, his personal image has taken a severe beating. It is his He's going around the country giving speeches, uh, addressing crowds, but uh, there are widespread reports that he's not getting the response that he used to get in, say, 2019 or 2014. Again, that also has to do with the people, people the voters in different states, how they're responding to Mr. Modi, how they're responding to the BJP. And uh, the, the third learning, of course, uh, which everybody is talking about is by itself, Livelihood issues, inflation, they and lack of jobs, severe un unemployment, uh, rural distress. These issues have on their own foregrounded themselves, again brought by the people. It is not as if the opposition had any great strategy to take these issues to the people. It, so it is a it's all about how the people uh, have have articulated their uh, uh, their thoughts, uh, articulated their anger, articulated their frustrations, articulated their disappointments over the last one and a half months that we've seen six phases of elections completed. And to discuss all this, uh, we have uh, with us uh, uh, Parkala Prabhakar, very well-known political economist. He needs no introduction. He's been on the wire uh, video channel many times and he, I called him because he is the first person probably among the first few or probably the first who four months ago who told me and who also said it on several platforms uh, that it is the people of India who essentially will fight these elections uh, because the opposition was constrained and hamstrung uh, by on various accounts, uh, the way the ruling party was uh, trying to go after the opposition, you know, jailing their leaders, uh, raiding them, uh, and putting all kinds of uh, constraints on the opposition, uh, it 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 became clear that the that eventually the people of India will have to fight this election, and and this is something that Parkala Prabhakar, uh, as a political economist, articulated uh, four months ago, and he said this first during the Karnataka elections, where he observed that the, it's the people uh, much more than the, the, the opposition party, which actually fought the BJP. Uh, welcome to our show, Parkala. You, uh, uh, as I said, you 
you were among the first to say that the the people of India are fighting the elections. So, uh, can you just expand on what what will happen now? Now, six phases are over. We have one phase left. By all accounts, the battle is 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 very close. Uh, the all the all the big claims about Charso Power and BJP on its own, uh, you know, making uh, getting three hundred seventy plus, etc., is, is all gone. So, although the BJP, Mr. Amit Shah, the, uh, the Home Minister, of late uh, yesterday, he's trying to build, uh, revive this narrative that BJP on its own uh, is already getting three hundred ten seats after the sixth phase. Uh, uh, but 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 we all know that is not. That may not be true, and uh, as as elections have happened, uh, as six phases have happened across different uh, uh, states, especially north and west, Maharashtra, Maharashtra is turning out to be a big swing state. Uh, there are other states also which are which are uh, which, which are showing potential uh, to to bring BJP tally quite dramatically in north and west. And this is something that even political consultants who are uh, who are sympathetic to the BJP have admitted. Like Prashant Kishore, who says that BJP could still make it, does say that in the north and the western region, BJP will lose about fifty seats. Uh, so, so you can you give us your uh, your assessment on what you see after the six phases, and there's only one phase left. Vedu, thank you very much for having me uh, on Wire once again. I really enjoy talking to you. Um, you know, my learning about uh, that an election could be not merely a fight between a few political parties, one of the few political parties, the ruling party, opposition, ruling party, and you know, uh, several uh, political parties, came essential after I have observed very closely the Karnataka election. Mm -hmm. You know, and after the Karnataka election, I formulated this in the following way, that the Karnataka election was a victory of the people against the BJP mm. and the Congress was merely a beneficiary of that, mm. rather than Congress fighting the BJP and winning it. Similar thing has happened in Telangana. Mm. And if you take that as a springboard mm. and project that onto the national scene, Today, what I find is that the people of India are fighting this election. And therefore, this fight is between the Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi and the people of India, Bharati Janata Party and the people of India, NDA and the people of India. Mm. Venu, against the people of India, whoever may be the leader, may be the tallest, even a Bahubali, even Sri Narendra Modi, would look like a Lilliput. And against the people of India, even an electoral juggernaut, a very resourceful organization like the Bharati Janata Party, it would look like a toy car. And even a, a very, very formidable alliance like the National Democratic Alliance, mm -hmm. confronted with the people of India, against the people of India, they would look like, you know, a clueless, disorganized uh, bunch of ants. That is exactly what is happening. Now, why I say this very clearly is this, that a lot of mainstream media people, analysts, and observers, you know, they have applied the traditional tools to look at this election. Yeah. And looked at this election like what, what as... What percentage the BJP had last time? How much can it lose? Yes. Yeah. And then... If not Modi, who? Mm. If not BJP, which party? Mm. If not NDA, which alliance? Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at, you know, a, 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 a leader and another leader, mm -hmm. if, it, if you pit one leader against the other, one party against the other, and one uh, alliance against the other, mm -hmm. you will definitely tend to see these leaders as very big, very strong, that party and that uh, alliance is very strong. Mm -hmm. But if you look at people versus the regime, then you will have a different kind of a perspective. This is one. Yes. And here again, the same thing which I told you about Karnataka and uh, Telangana is playing out in the entire country. Okay. 
Uh, the second thing is that... Uh, here, here, I just want to, uh, before you proceed, when you say the entire country, is it playing out uniformly across states? Or because I get the impression that some states, the people are uh, much more involved in fighting the uh, the, the regime, uh, by the BJP and Mr. Modi, than in other states. So, uh, the, the varying, the experiences are, uh, there is anti-incumbency, but varying degrees of anti-incumbency in, in so I'm, I'm just no. uh, so that you can you, you yes. can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I'm not saying that it's strictly uniform. Yeah, yeah. you know, it is uneven. Yeah. But the thread is uniform. The thread. There's yeah. a common you know, thread. Everywhere it is, you know, whoever is fight, whoever you know, the people will elect those people who are able to, you know, in the electoral arena defeat the BJP. Mm. It is not everywhere. It is. It, it may not be the same party or the, or the single party or the or uh, you know same uh, group of parties or a group of alliances. But then it is a vote against the BJP. This is one. Mm. The second thing is you talked about uh, narrative setting. Mm. Now once this has become you know increasingly obvious, mm. then what was once thought a a done deal yeah. is no more a done deal. And even today, people who think that it is not a done deal are not able to point out who is the actual challenge. Yeah. Is it the Congress? Is, is it the Samajwadi Party? Is it the BJD? Is it the DMK? They're not able to, you know, figure that out. That is because a lot of people are missing the adversary to the regime are the people, not the political parties. Okay. This is one. The second thing is that, you know, there is this narrative setting you, you, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I heard that after the third phase was over, mm. the Home Minister Sri Amit Shah had said, how, till then it was 370 seats which completed polling. Yeah. And he claimed out of 370, 270 war in their bank. Already. That's what he said at that point. Yeah, like he said, after the sixth phase, he said 310 are in BJP's. Yeah. Day. At that time, at the end of third phase, he said 270. 270. Now then when you calculate, uh, Venu, if you have to win 270 out of 370, your strike rate ought to be about 72 to 73 yeah. percent, which is absolutely impossible. It has never happened. It will not happen, mm -hmm. especially given the present circumstances, given the configuration yeah. that we see today. It is unlikely to happen. And, and given, it, given that it's very visible that the People are fighting, coming out and yes. fighting this government. You know, this regime and the leadership of Sri Narendra Modi are facing very, very strong headwinds. Mm. Let's be very clear about it. Mm. Now, they are trying to foreground the mandir and the divisive issues and the communal issues and Hindu-Muslim issues. Which has not worked. Uh, you know, in, in fact, the language of the Prime Minister from... Uh, Matan to Machli to you know Muslim to Mangal Sutra to Mujra, Mujra mm -hmm. you know all this mm -hmm. is towards that direction. But the people have foregrounded mm -hmm. the rural districts, the uh, Berozgari, yeah. Mehengai, yeah. you know black money, etc. So here, here I want to just uh, just push you a little on this. Uh, how they've I remember you telling me some uh, many months ago that the opposition has to foreground this, these issues, but but you are you are now saying you are convinced that the, the people themselves have foregrounded these issues. That's right. Because all the reporters who go out, whether in UP or wherever, North India, West, the one thing that they immediately talk about without provocation is rural distress, kharcha ni chalra, uh, jobs nahi hai, you know, and it's a it's almost as if it's uh, it's 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 there on their lips, and it's you just have to go there. For it to just pour out. You know, um, it's very interesting that uh, I'm not trying to belittle the political party sectors. Mm. Please don't get me wrong. But in spite of very focused attempts by the political parties, the people have foregrounded this. Mm. You know, in American, uh, some time back, uh, they used to say, read my lips, no more taxes. Yeah. You know, without saying it, read my lips. Mm. Here the people are saying, read my lips, no more BJP. Yeah. 
you know that's very 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 clear obvious and evident uh let's come back to the narrative now it's not possible to have a strike rate of 73 especially yeah. you know given the circumstances mm-hmm. the mangai in berozgari rural districts and all that now they are struggling with 50% the narrative yes. is that will they hit the 50% mark right yes mm-hmm. and you see there seems to be some kind of a confusion mm-hmm. both among the election observers mm-hmm. people who, who look at the election and analyze and as well as the bjp mm-hmm. you know um, whenever the bjp or its earlier avatar the bharatiya janata mm-hmm. whenever they went on a hindutva plan a hindu rashtra plan mm-hmm. they could not cross 15% of the total votes of the total votes of the total poll votes earlier that was you know in, in the last election that uh, you gave that kind of a a uh, figure to bjs the jansang was uh, 72 yeah. after that they merged the the janta party yeah, yeah. and after that the highest they had mm. under sri ati bihari vajpayee was about 25% 25% yeah. uh, 26 yeah, you know you know point uh, yeah, yeah. you know mm. something so let's say 25 between 25 and 26, 26. but that was after they said that that they were uh, keeping article 370 common civil code and temple, and temple on the back but back okay and then they had this uh, you know national democratic alliance and agenda for governance mm-hmm. and all that and then they got 25 26 mm-hmm. okay 20, uh, 98 this, this was uh, 98 was the highest yeah. you know 2009 was the lowest about 18 19 yeah, yeah, yeah but then you know 2014 which means mm-hmm. uh, the point to be noted here is mm-hmm. in in 98 the agenda was not hindu yeah, yeah so that was 26% yeah. now in 2014 which Ka- gave them power modi and he they takes it out 26 to 31 no but then in 2014 again the pitch was not hindu yeah it was two crore jobs mm-hmm. you know uh, against corruption you're right yeah Uh, avoiding the policy paralysis bringing back uh, black money from abroad you know all these things so you were arguing that the the increment modi got in 2014 uh, was, but then but then you have was to, not hindutva you say yeah that is one yeah. the other thing is that you know you have to take 31% with some kind of a correction okay because uh, it was again an alliance yeah and say for instance i my my home state on the pradesh if bjp in a constituency polls about 3 lakh votes mm. it's not bjp it is the tdp vote which is going to transfer which which means that if you correct those things then you will end up bjp not 35 really but then um, 30, 31 31 31 yeah. uh, 2014 not 31 but then you take away about 4 or 5% mm. then which is about 26 27 which means that the net accrual to bjp under sri narendra modi was about 3 or 4% not more than that in 2014 in 2014 that is without the hindutva pitch okay. now in 2019 that has gone to 37 again if you apply the corrections that would come down to 33 or so which means between 98 25 26 okay. to 2019 31 the net accrual is about 6% both the terms without the hindutva plan okay now now if 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 that was conflated as hindutva result mm-hmm. then there is a problem here because these people think today that I, we, they can appeal to hindutva hindu rashtra that kind of a narrative divisive narrative muslim mujra mams mangal sutra and all that then they are going to fall back 25 or even below this is one of the things that we need to very carefully observe most of the observers as i said including the bjp itself mm-hmm. is not able to realize this now if you do this kind of a thing then today with the kind of uh, pitch that the bjp and the prime minister are going to the victory so they are actually preventing themselves from expanding from 25 and retaining their 37 or 31 or 33 or uh, you know uh, 
So that is, you know, there it's almost like shooting in the foot. Then so basically, what you're saying is that Mr. Modi, with a sudden uh, midway through the campaign, this big Hindu-Muslim pitch that he started, it was uh, essentially it could be to just protect his what what BJP perceives as their core Hindutva vote base. Is that what you say? You know. I'm Whatever, 32, 33 percent. I like, get the yeah. feel, uh, you know, because it you is, know, is a sign of insecurity that that they should at least, you know, I'm wondering, get those people to the to come to vote and. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm wondering why mm -hmm. the BJP and the Prime Minister especially doesn't anymore talk about Sabka Vikas and Sabka Sabka. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. that's done, dusted. And then after being in office for ten years, that the Prime Minister when he seeks a renewed mandate mm -hmm. is not coming forward and saying that look I've created these new jobs I brought this much of a mm -hmm. black money back and you know I I brought the prices this much down mm -hmm. nothing of that sort yeah. so which means that somewhere in the back of their minds probably they feel that it's already a gone case it's a lost case and I'm, I'm and really therefore the, therefore your point mm -hmm. where at least now let us let us get out of it respectfully and protect that poor constituency around us, lest even that might defect. Okay. You know, it's very interesting you're saying this, Parkala, because uh, CSDS, which only calculates vote share, you know that, they don't do uh, seats. Seat. And they have been fairly reasonably uh, on the mark uh, in, in the last few elections, uh, in state elections, uh, in, in looking at the vote share. So I saw the I saw Sanjay Kumar who, who leads the CSDS poll uh, on India Today TV two days ago. He said in early April, he his survey showed that BJP's vote share was exceeding thirty seven percent, probably getting near forty. Mm -hmm. And he and he felt that that it was happening because a lot of when you went to the ground, uh, as you just said. A lot of people are in distress. People are economic distress, rural distress, lack of jobs. And he says at least four, five, six percentage of uh, percent uh, of voters, they were reluctant voters, but they his survey in early April showed that they were still going with BJP. Then he suddenly said two days ago that he, probably in his in his later surveys, he says that all these reluctant voters have moved away. So Essentially saying that that actually BJP have, might have in vote share might have slid way below thirty seven, which they got last time. That it in some ways also talks. Yeah, you see, in some ways, uh, you know, uh, my surmise is this. You know, confirm what you are saying. Yeah, Will my you? surmise is this. Yeah. You know, see, two thousand fourteen vote hmm. was you know uh, against corruption, against you know policy, yes. policy paralysis and black money, you know, all that kind yeah. of thing. And the promise of development, development, yeah. and you know, uh, and you see the, the way the way Mr. Modi was branded, yeah, yeah. as uh, you know, uh, as a as a as a Vikas Puru, yeah, development Shukana messiah, and messiah, yeah. Gujarat model behind him, yeah, you know, yeah. large yeah. schemes and all that, and a lot of urban middle class, educated, professional market pe markets, people who who do not like corruption, those people have moved over to. Yeah. The BJP, and that was the one which propelled BJP from twenty five percent or twenty six percent to thirty one, and then along with the allies. Yeah. and later went to thirty six, thirty seven. That 30, is because yeah, that is in the wake of Bala Court and uh, yeah. uh, Pulwama. Yeah, further consolidation. Further yeah. consolidation. Yeah. You know, it's a national. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then, what about now? You now, think that all then? How then much what happens is, is then what happens is that you know one is that because etc is not even there. They pitch. Yeah. They're not even talking about it. And people know. About it. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of rural display. Yeah. So there's a lot of unemployment. There's a lot of price. And they sound very unconvincing when the Prime Minister says that we have solved the employment problem. Nobody yeah. believes Nobody it. Nobody believes it. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think he's also and, saying very, very, yeah. and you two, know. And two crore jobs a year, nobody yeah. believes yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, they're also, I mean, somewhere I saw that they were claiming 40 crore jobs are created. Yeah. Something like that. Nobody, 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 nobody bothers about it. Okay. Leave that. And, you know, now there are two factors in operation as far as I could see. One is that, you know, this kind of a narrative is not going ahead. 
and those people who veered towards bjp in 14 and later on 19 you know this particular class that i told you about urban mm. educated professional yes. you know outward looking you know uh, uh, patriotic or whatever mm. they have become disillusioned mm. also because of electoral bias yeah because you see that has knocked off the moral high ground of bjp yeah. the anti trust plan yeah. yeah it used to be na khaunga na khane to you know i have come across a lot of people and, and there was a there was a narrative that in bjp there, there may be corruption at some uh, lower levels at the, but but at the central authority level there was no corruption so yeah. it busted that myth that's it you know uh, i have come across a lot of people in 19 14 in between they used to tell me that you know okay they're not doing very well in economy is is, is not in good uh, good health and all that kind of thing mm-hmm. but whatever it is they are honest they are mm. not corrupt mm. but now that moral high ground is collapsed yeah see people are perceiving that's a different thing but what is the bjp's own defense about electoral box i heard the home minister himself saying that those people also have taken yeah you see it's not that we have not taken mm. so it is no more we have not taken we are honest and they are corrupt mm. it is they are also corrupt and we are also corrupt. Mm-hmm. you know it is this is without saying it in so many words you are admitting that you are also corrupt and the percentages means, are known yeah, how, how much and, went to bjp you know, and, and, and 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 he went on to say that you know we have this much of percentage of mp so there we you know our our corruption our share of that is yeah, is yeah. larger and all that kind of thing it doesn't wash now you might say some people might say that you know electoral bonds very complex thing you know how will a common person understand i am th- i am saying even 2g scam was very complex and people didn't understand but this much they understood that money has changed yeah. so this this uh, this one more one is the corruption thing the another one which is important i think in this context we must talk about this is the the wilting of modi brand mm. and i say that a modi fatigue has set in now mm. and you know modi brand is it's everywhere on your telephone on the holding in the newspaper on the television you know your social media everywhere and so much over exposure the congress ad also shows that right yeah Absolutely. something that has come but yeah. you know I, we have been talking about this for a long time yeah. the point is this i don't know whoever is managing the brand the the, the important thing is the a brand should not be over exposed yeah. in, in this case it's over exposed and another thing is you know when when you build a brand people are surprised and they are curious and they will they will take it but once the brand doesn't walk the talk then they'll be back even at some stage it will be assessed whether it has a commensurate product exactly behind it is it delivering yeah. which means that you know when the brand doesn't walk the talk there'll be backlash and today narendra modi's brand suffers from that kind of a backlash so therefore the backlash the civil society foregrounding these issues mm. and bjp confusing between you know hindutva plank and what you see point is this people generally learn lessons from their defeat mm. but it is also equally important to learn lessons from the victory now bjp if it understood why it won in 14 and 19 learned lessons from it they won't have got into this kind of a muslim gujra mams and mangal sutra yeah you see therefore so this kind of a you know conflation between well how much can hindutva and hindu rashtra deliver us electorally in this country in a diverse country yes so therefore there is a problem there so that is another one and then you know the the objective reality which is happening in the country the countryside the jobs and everything all this put together it is the civil society which is the general people of the country are now waging a battle against this regime and i there's no 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 gain saying in discussing about you know constitutional values secularism and all that they are also there because you know once this people have started saying that charles of par will give us this thing to change the constitution mm-hmm. there are a lot of concerns and misgivings among a large section of people yeah yeah This was also brought out by Sanjay Kumar in a CSDS survey. Mm. He said one reason why a lot of people have there's a late swing against the BJP is because of the backlash against the Charso Par narrative. 
because there are a lot of and Dalits and other, uh, uh, you know, Ati Pichras. And there is no firefighting from the side of the BJP mm-hmm. because they are not realizing this. And probably, you know, uh, all the uh, election com- we should also talk about election commission inflating the percentage of votes, and you know, there is a lot of uh, suspicion. There is, there is, a, there is a, you know, all said and done, you know, there is a trust deficit in so far as the election commission is concerned. Yeah. Is it people are now, you know, raising questions? Is it because of that the BJP is very confident and they're putting out these numbers? Mm-hmm. Because the ground reality doesn't compensate with that. But do you, uh, do you see uh, people who are angry? And uh, I also, I, in Maharashtra, I saw, I've never seen so much anger against uh, this, the center for various reasons. You know, we're banning onion exports, and the onion prices crashing and the entire... You know, Lassal Gao ecosystem, you know, the, the Mandis. onion market in, in Asia. Uh, people are co- coming out on the streets and saying that we'll, we'll take this government down. And, and there are uh, there are other issues also. Marathi pride being, you know, uh, being hurt. They felt humiliated the way Delhi were, had, had splintered Maharashtra politics. The way they have treated. I saw a bit of the NTR kind of thing, you know. The humiliation. Exactly. How yes. Mar- Marathis, I saw that sentiment among Then it was Telugu pride. Yeah, the Telugu pride, yeah. So, uh, but will the, the question is, uh, which was being asked there also in Maharashtra, uh, will these people come out and vote? Uh, uh, do you, are you seeing that, that in the, broadly in the voting patterns? I mean, is a, uh, I mean, do you see that all these people are coming out to vote? Yes. Huh? I do see that. Okay. You know, uh, there is anger. There is disgust. And, you know, what many people are missing out is that there is a sense of being let down. Let down. And there is a sense of, you know, we trusted you, we trusted you for 10 years, we gave you a chance, you asked for a chance, you promised us so many things. One. The other thing is, people are questioning. I have come across a lot of people because, as you know, you know I've been traveling for the last six to eight months throughout the country, except Jammu and Kashmir and a few northeastern states. I've covered almost every state. In some states, I went even twice, thrice. In the last six, seven months. Six, right? seven months. Mm. And, and you, you see, you saw this uniform. Whenever, whenever I go, I also make sure because I, I've been in this uh, political observation, political polling, etc. Mm. for some time. Mm. This this time, I've, I've made sure that I met the cross section of people, the mm. representative cross section of people, mm. representative uh, sampling. So I felt that, you know, People have been talking. You know, 10 years we have given a chance. Yeah. Even now, this leader talks about, you know, after 3 years I'll do this, after 5 years I'll do this, 2047 I'll do this, 35 I'll do this. 1000 years he's talk, talking yeah. about. That. So yeah. that is just where I found there is a sense of letdown. Also, uh, I'm just adding to this letdown. Uh, there, there are other people like you who have done, uh, traveled to various states and uh, spoken to representative sa- people, samples in rural uh, uh, India. Yogendra Yadav, for instance, he's been, I mean, we are talking to, he's been talking to the wire at every stage. First, he went to Western UP, Rajasthan, then he went to, you know, Bihar, Eastern UP, etc. Chhattisgarh. He's, he says that he, in his uh, straw polling, you know, uh, he found many switches from BJP to uh, opposition across. Now, if that is true, he says it is, he is 100% certain that big switches from BJP to Congress, but he says you don't know the extent of uh, how much vote percentage drop will BJP suffer in UP, where they have big leads in many constituencies. Of course, they have smaller leads in about 20-25 uh, constituencies also. So it could impact, uh, because they, they might lose constituencies with smaller leads. But I am asking in, in the broader sense, what, what do you have for? From 37 percent vote share in 2019, if there are s- people switched from BJP across India, uh, how much will the vote share drop? Roughly, I mean, we can't speculate seats because it's very tough. It's it's a it's, it's a futile exercise to to convert into seats. But at least vote share. What's your sense? Okay, um, Venu, allow me before I come to that, yes. just say, just to say a couple of sentences about the Ram Mandir. Uh-huh. Okay, you know. I was I was very apprehensive about the impact of Ram Mandir. I I I somehow I I 
you know, I had this hypothesis Ram, Ram Mandir can really positively impact the BGP. Yeah. But, you know, I've been trying since then and I've been asking many people, I, have you ever come across somebody who was not in favor of BJP before 22nd January and because of Ram Mandir, they have turned in favor of BJP? I have not come across even a single. Person. So this is well, you, this you're right. This is Yogi Adam's observation also. Uh, in well, UP, yeah. he didn't find very many switches well, from opposition to BJP. Yeah. Well, you know, on on account of Ram Mandir. Well, it has it has probably deepened and consolidated the existing one. Yeah. But it has not added a new vote share to them. This yeah. is one. Then when I when you look at the thirty seven, where is it? You said thirty seven itself. I disputed because it's. I know uh, uh, for whatever reason. Yeah, but how, what, how much will it go down? Yeah. You see. If you if you if you look at the BJP, let me let me say this. I mean, I have to differentiate between NDA and BJP here yeah. for a very good reason. I'll tell you what it is. Now, no, I for, take your point that you're saying on the for the thirty-seven percent vote share that BJP got. Yeah, some bits could be on you, account of its alliance partners whose votes would have yeah. transferred so to them. You, no, th yeah. there is a there is an important point. Here. Mm. You you take out about four or five percent there, yeah. so thirty-seven becomes thirty-two yeah. or thirty-three. Now. I'm I'm saying this because you see the alliance, unlike before, mm -hmm. the NDA alliance is not an ideological alliance here. Okay. First ever time, it's not at all. There is a, not a single party which was which is an ideological ally. Mm -hmm. They're all contextual allies. They're all real politic allies. Yeah, yeah. So which means the if the BJP is not comfortably positioned with say within striking distance of. 272, mm -hmm. the existing allies might desert them. Mm -hmm. There is a danger. One, even, even somebody like Naidu might. Uh, I, mean, I don't want to comment on okay. each individual uh, parties, yeah, yeah. but yeah. overall, because, 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 because of lack of trust. You because what, what is the binding force okay. between these political parties? You, you, the transactional uh, allies. They're transactional, contextual, yeah. real political allies. Yeah. Therefore, you know, if it if if the BJP is, is confined to between 200 and 220, as I expect, mm -hmm. not 220 to not 230, as I earlier thought, yeah, yeah. four five months ago. Yeah. But now I feel they will somewhere settle between 200 and 220. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, they are likely to lose these transactional allies, which means they will be isolated. Okay. And on vote share, yeah, how much do you think the you see, uh, they will go back to uh, below 25%, which was their 98. I mean, you, that, that possibility is there, Yes. Right? That is the possibility that I see. Okay. It's not there. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's not just merely there. Yeah. That is where they're heading. Yeah. And every day, whatever the Prime Minister utters mm -hmm. is driving BJP to that direction. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is driving the BJP's vote down mm -hmm. and probably only consolidating their Hindutva constituency. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, um, this doesn't mean to say that they will become zero or they won't be, because there has always been a Hindutva constituency in this country. Yeah. There is today and there will always be. Mm -hmm. But that constituency will be somewhere limited to subpar 25. Okay. Okay. So that is where they are going to settle it. Okay, so they're headed in that direction. Also. Yes. Every day it is increasingly they're heading in that direction. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Parkala, uh, for talking to us. Uh, that was very interesting insight from you. Uh, we will we'll speak again after after fourth uh, uh, June. Uh, uh, everything will become clear uh, as to what is happening and all the narrative setting that is going on. I hope we'll come to rest after fourth June. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.